And now our penultimate speaker practices as a criminal defense lawyer at Sitar Milcherik in Calgary. She has an MA and a JD honors from the University of Toronto. And when she's not being a lawyer, she pets her cat and eats snacks. And I like her already. Please welcome Sarah Rankin. parties when they learn that what I do for a living is defend accused criminals, or as they see it, monsters. <laughs> so I want to bring you 19 thoughts about what my job is, what it isn't, and why I believe in it. The state has the power to come into your home, to physically control your body, and to take your freedom. Those extraordinary powers come with the duty to exercise them when they've earned the right and only when they've earned the right. Everyone is presumed innocent when they are accused, and they're entitled to a trial, and that's where I come in. When the state comes after you, they have a massive set of resources behind them. We fund the police and crown prosecutors because they're crucial for public safety and the public interest. But I believe you should never face that wall of resources on your own. I am the only person in the room who faces them with you. Someone who was once on the verge of regaining their freedom told me that the thing they were most excited about was picking their own pizza toppings. And I think about that all the time when I think about what it means to lose your freedom or to be at risk of losing your freedom, and why it is that we make the state work so hard to take it. In most cases, an offense is a single, often brief moment in time. Clients are whole people with lives, families, communities, and complicatedness that stretches out long before the time of the offense and it continues long after. I think everyone should be judged as a whole person. In many cases, seeing them as a whole person also means understanding a complicated set of social, historical, racial, socioeconomic, and other factors that funneled them into their lives and the situations where they, allegedly, made the decision that brought them before the court. They made the decision, but it didn't happen in a social vacuum. To be clear, it's not my job to help people avoid consequences all the time. In fact, in most cases, defense lawyers help people navigate pleading guilty and working out a sentence with the Crown. We ensure the Crown and the court have all the information they need, not just about the offense, but about the whole context of the person who was responsible. It's also not my job to hate the police. Sometimes they're adorable. <laughs> my commitment to hold them accountable and to scrutinize their behavior according to the rules we've constitutionalized isn't about animosity that I have. It's about fairness and justice and the belief that they can be better. We live in a time when really fundamental institutions and rules are under serious threat. The rules that mean the state can only interfere in your life with your body, invade your privacy or your home when they have a good enough reason are some of those institutions. And in my view, criminal trials are the primary way that those are consistently enforced. What we think it's okay for state institutions to do in the dark when they're, when they're allowed to do it and why is a reflection of our values. It's been said a bunch of ways over time but what I take it to mean is that we are judged most by what happens in the dark when no one else is watching. Whether our institutions have integrity is important because they are us. These are our symbols, our agents, and our governments. If the system we have built permits cruelty or arbitrariness or discrimination or abuses, we are collectively endorsing that and it's on our behalf. These are really emotional areas, and how we balance them reflects our maturity as a society. We believe in safety and in order, but I think we also believe in diversity, our right to have secret inner lives, crushes, affairs, sex, hobbies, medical histories, that we all have diverse values and judgments about. We get to be complicated, and I don't think the state has any right to meddle in that. I think of defense counsel as deputized to carry the weight of those stakes. I don't think any individual victim has to feel or believe any of this. I have been a victim of crime. They can and feel should whatever, can and should feel whatever feels right for them. This shit is complicated, so we built a system to try and balance out those interests. And as weird as it sounds, I also think high standard of proof and fairness in a courtroom helps victims overall. 
When someone is convicted of something, it means something. We understand it's a sign of strong evidence and it carries a lot of social power precisely because I put the state through its paces every time. On the flip side, if we're going to condemn someone, if we're going to take them from their children, their family, their jobs, judge them long into the future through record checks and limited employment opportunities, we better be as sure as we can possibly be. We don't like crimes, but saying with certainty that someone is a criminal is a big deal, and it's important that we be sure about it. Defense counsel plug the dam against behavior that makes you less free. If you've ever been pulled over, you'll remember your stomach and knots, and likely realizing you didn't know what was allowed to happen next or what was normal. Almost all the protections operating in that interaction that you weren't sure about are things defense counsel have built. One huge way this plays out right now is fights defense lawyers are having to keep all the information on your cell phone as private as possible. I think it would shock most Canadians to learn that the CDSA, for example, says it can search every corner of your phone at the border if they want to. Defense counsel are the ones fighting about that. There are a lot of us in this room, and I'd wager that more than one of your phones includes messages you've sent to very carefully selected people about thoughts you're having about leaving your job, your marriage, a booty call, flirty texts, naked pictures, your banking information. Defense counsel are trying to make sure that you're the only one who decides how that information gets shared. But the last thing I'll say about my job is that when I say a system is built to ensure fairness and someone has to stand with accused people to make sure the rules are followed, I mean that. Someone has to, so that everyone else doesn't have to if they don't want to. And I am happy to be deputized to play that part. So I don't need you to necessarily agree with me, or even to like me. I just need you to tolerate me and consider that people who do my job don't do it because we're monsters who love monsters. We really believe that spending our days dedicated to fairness and complexity makes our computer, computers, communities better in the long run. <laughs>